Hey, everybody. Good evening. Thank you so much for being uh, here with us tonight for our uh, edgy launch party with one of my favorite people on the planet. I'm so excited to be here. And we have been having technical difficulties all night long. So we're ready to get those behind us and to move forward and to have some fun with this. Um, so I am uh, super excited to be here for this edgy launch party for my friend Akua. Men's Moses. And she has the most amazing book that even when I first saw it, when it was first handed in, um, I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be a superstar book. I just cannot wait to get this thing launched. And so I'm really excited to be here tonight. And my friend, can you tell uh, everybody a little bit about yourself, please? Well, thank you so much again, Mandy, for hosting this tonight. My name is Akua Moses, like you said. And I work here in Las Vegas, Nevada in Clark County School District, uh, which is the fifth largest school district in the United States. So I travel to all kinds of schools each and every day. We have over 360 schools in our district working with students and families on family engagement. Absolutely love it. I'm married. I have a husband and two teenage children as well. <laughs> That is awesome. It is. It's just such a pleasure to know you. And um, I, again, just what this is the sweetest lady I've ever met in my life. Everybody needs to know that she is an absolute uh, gem uh, of a person. So I'm so excited about this book launch. And um, so can you tell us a little bit about, so, you know, one of our favorite things about the edgy launch parties is to really get to know the author and why they wrote the book. So can you tell us a little bit about the title? Absolutely. One of the things I'm asked most frequently is about my name and where is it from and what does it mean? And I try to give really concise explanations, but I wanted to write this book because it's so much more. Like, yes, it is an address and I'll explain. So when you see my first name, Ekua, many it's common in Ghana, not so much here. And so not everybody really understands what that means. Um, so Ekua um, is a name that's given to girls born on Wednesday in the Fonte tribe, which my family is from. And so when you look at my first name, you can say, okay, it's from the continent of Africa. More specifically, it's from Ghana. And she's in the Fonte tribe. And when you know that it's the Fonte tribe, the Fonte tribe is around the Cape Coast area. So then when you look at my last name, my last name can lead you to where generations of my family have lived in the compound houses that they lived or the neighborhoods that they lived and people can direct you by your name. So um, our culture is very family centric. And so that's why I wanted to make sure I wrote and explained that, yes, it is an address. Yes, you can track me down, but it's so much more than that as well. Yeah, that is, I, that is absolutely awesome. And, and just the fact that all of the girls who are born on Wednesday have the same name, I think is fascinating. Do you know the, the history behind that, why they do that? Well, it's a cultural thing that has gone back um, for a, a very long time. But I do want to point out that not everyone uses this uh, naming system. There are lots of other names in Ghana too. This is just one example of one tradition on how names are. <laughs> That is awesome. I, I absolutely love that. Um, and so the um, one of the things that really struck me about your book uh, right off the bat when I saw it are the beautiful pictures and illustrations. I mean, honestly, they're breathtaking. Um, so can you tell us a little bit, um, you know, just what inspired the graphics and illustrations for your book? Well, I have to say, I was very, very blessed to live in a house that's essentially almost a museum. <laughs> My mother was a professional <laughs> artist, um, trained artist, very gifted. We had lots and lots of art. She was always painting and carving and crafting in the house. And equally, my dad has a thing for art as well. Although he's not producing it, he does like to collect it. And when we travel, he's always picking up instruments and carvings and souvenirs and um, mm -hmm. all kinds of cultural artifacts and bringing those home. So I just grew up and I, I thought, you know, I would love to find a way to kind of showcase the story I would like to see written, the story that I don't see on my shelves about a family with a Guinean father, immigrant father, and an African-American mother, which is a little bit different, and how 
they put their two backgrounds together to make this beautiful thing. And I have to say that, Mandy, I, when I was in college, I had this idea that I wanted to try this concept. And I wrote a book. <laughs> this is it from back then. You can see the, the ring binding. This is all the way back from 2000. I tried to write a book <laughs> that was about Ghana and about the colors and about my family. And I want to show you this picture here because this is in the current book now. I don't know if you can see that there. I know it's a little hard to see. Yeah. But absolutely. if you recognize this picture down here with me and my little chalkboard, um, uh -huh. as you can see, it's very, very basic, right? And I had to print this at the mm -hmm. coffee shop and I, I sent it to over 20 <laughs> different publishers by mail. It was really pricey as a college student. And I got rejected and rejected and rejected. And I thought, okay, obviously, clearly, this is not for me, right? So I hung up my author hat and I was done. Fast forward to 2020. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to try again because I think we have a story. I think we could use the art. We could use the artifacts I tried here, but it, it wasn't the time, Mandy. And so now I'm like, okay, <laughs> great. Let's put that together in a book. And it worked out so beautifully. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure that it was absolutely heartbreaking getting turned down from those publishers, but I got to say from my standpoint, I have never been happier oh, <laughs> that we were able to be the ones to <laughs> get that when book into publishers time? because I absolutely love it. <laughs> when it's your time, it's your time. <laughs> when it's not, it's not. <laughs> That's right. And I, I am so proud that we were able to be the one to do that. So um, Melody says, congrats on being Amazon's number one new release for children's African history. So congratulations on your number one new release status as well. I appreciate it. That That is so, it means a lot to me. Uh, I even wrote a blog. I hope people will look for our Edgy Match blogs. Um, I have a blog coming out talking about how much that really means to me to be in that category because I know that it's not a category that a lot of people read. And so I'm happy to be there and represent and add more stories to a category that's really needed. Absolutely. That's amazing. Um, so we have... Um, you know, we have, uh, this is a party, right? And so yeah. we have guests at yeah. parties. And guests come knocking at your door. And so I we have it. a guest knocking at your door right now. And yeah. I am so, so, so excited to meet this person. So do you want to take a minute to uh, introduce him while I bring him on? Absolutely. So with us today is my father, Mr. Alvian Menz III. You can see his picture. There he is. Yay. Hi, Dad. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm so hi. thrilled to have him with me because I couldn't have done this book without him. Um, he has given us so much, my sister and I, so much in terms of knowing who we are and where we're from and how important that is. And if you can see where he is right now, he has some paintings right beside him. Um, he was instrumental in helping me put the book together and sending me, because I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, and my dad is in Missouri, Warrensburg specifically. So pandemic blessing brought us together and putting the book together. And so I'm so thankful to have him. He's retiring soon in August um, after years at the university in town. And so I'm so thankful to have him. His participation has meant the world to me. So welcome, Dad. <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> That is at, that's awesome. We're so happy to have you here. And um, I think, um, oh, we have, we have Rachel must be a uh, relation there. She says, yeah. hi. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so can you tell us just a, a little bit about um, what does it, mean? I mean, so you, typically our guests that we have on are people that just know the author, have read the book. But I can imagine in your family, this has such a bigger meaning for you and such a, a deeper meaning for you. So what do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, we are all educators and we are sitting on a good mind in the sense of artifacts and books and stories and travel and whatnot. 
And so I was so excited that the Corps decided to bring some of this you know, out for the public to see and uh, get it in the form of a book. And as she said, as uh, you know, way back, she was ambitious to write a book by herself. I'm supposed to write a book. People encourage me to write a book. And so I'm very, very excited that the Kua has beaten me to it. I've written lots of articles and whatnot. I used to be even a contributor to GhanaWeb.com and wrote articles all over the place. And as an instructor, have lots of articles and public speaking and whatnot. And so this is very, very exciting for us that the course uh, book is out today. Mm. Thank you. That, that is so, that's so sweet. I, I love, um, I just love everything about how your family has been so involved uh, in this and, and what a, you know, just what a, a amazing feeling it must be to have something that you all worked on um, and have it published and just, you know, um, have that family tie within the book as well. I yeah. just, I think it's amazing. And I wanted to tell you, Mandy, that it was amazing how all of this worked. So in 2000, when I applied to EduMatch, if you recall, I only sent to EduMatch the, the manuscript, just the written words of it. I didn't, and I sent with it an idea file of some things that could be done. And um, Sarah, Dr. Sarah Thomas, CEO, wrote back, there she is. <laughs> hello. Hello. Speaking of the devil, hello. Hello, hello. And, and Dr. Sarah said, this is wonderful, but we're not accepting anyone who's not an author illustrator right now. Do you think that you could work with the pictures or do something with them? And let me tell you, after all those rejections that I had 20 years ago, and I got this little bite of hope from Dr. Sarah saying, if you can work with the pictures, we can work with you. I was like, yes, I don't know how, but I'll figure it out. I'll do it. And I just, I can't, I can't thank you enough for believing in me and giving me that opportunity to put it all together in a creative way. And thank goodness the tech has advanced so much from 20 years ago when I first tried this. And I, I just thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to collaborate and it's it's been amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for being part of our EduMatch family, for sharing your beautiful family story. This this is just so amazing how, you know, how you're able to share it and all of the, um, the story just really grabs you as a reader. So um, I, I love that. And I love that the kids can read it and, you know, they can they can reflect and see themselves in that. So, so that you. is awesome. Yes, I appreciate indeed. it. Yes, indeed. So, Mr. Menz, is there anything that you want to say to your daughter today for her release? Oh, I just, you know, we have been so blessed to have a course, enthusiasm, willingness to launch out into the deep. And especially, you know, today's luncheon is exactly four years ago that she lost her mother, I lost my wife, if mm -hmm. we will be on soon too. And so this is a celebration for us that the memory of her mother is alive and people, you know, will really appreciate the work she did and the legacy. And so we are very, very honored to have this opportunity to showcase the Quest first book and we hope it's the beginning of many more books to come. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, you know, thank you all again for sharing this beautiful story uh, with the world, you know, um, what a beautiful tribute. So. And I do, Miss Dare, want to give credit to my father as well, because my mom in her prime, as you'll see in the books, captain of her volleyball team, really active in the community, um, exhibited a lot in Missouri. But remember, this was at a time before Facebook, before Etsy, before Instagram. So we did the little shows in Missouri um, and really didn't get much further than that. If we got to a show in St. Louis, that was like a really big deal, you know, an hour and a half, uh, three hours away. 
So just being able to get her work out again, because MS is a very progressive disease. And yes. some people only know my mom, the last 17 years of her life where she was bedridden. And my dad, I want to give him props because my dad was her full-time caregiver for 17 years while she was immobile and we weren't able to get her work out. So this really means so much to our family because now we can finally get her work out and show what we weren't able to show before and how we collaborate together so again this means so much it means so much that y'all are sharing it with us uh <laughs> we're, we're we're just so thankful for that and um just such a beautiful tribute so thank Thanks. you so much mm -hmm. yes okay and i see that we also have another guest that we're going to bring up so um mm -hmm. I'll, I'll bring everybody up at once if that's Sounds okay good. all right so hello hello how are you Hello, I am doing well. Thank you for having me, Edgy Match and Dr. Uh, Sarah. Thank you. It's great to see you. So, uh, if you could please introduce yourself to everybody who's watching, that would be, that'd be great. Okay. I am Ephra Sam, and I happen to be a Kua's eldest and only sibling, um, proud sister. And um, I have been her cheerleader, her champion. Um, through this process and um, collaborating, assisting her a bit. I currently reside in Charlotte, North Carolina, and um, I am a performing arts educator specializing in theater arts. And so I am happy to be here and I appreciate the invitation um, by EduMatch as well as Akua to be a part of this launch celebration today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so happy to have you on here. So, so we have like a, the whole, we have like a, a family affair going on here. <laughs> so. yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's yeah. a big thing because, you know, we don't get to where we are alone. Family is a huge part of who we are. And so I'm very thankful and blessed to have my sister and my father contributing to the book. So I hope everybody will take a look at the acknowledgement section where you will see both of them listed there. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so Efua, do you have any uh, words that you'd like to share with, with your sister for tonight? Uh, just that I am immensely proud of her, um, and I celebrate her work, um, her championing our family, our heritage, our story, um, for the beautiful um, work that she has done in terms of showcasing my mother's um, amazing artwork, our culture, our heritage, and we like to say life, love, legacy, and all of that I think was captured in her book. Um, some of the collaborative work that I contributed or assisted with, and um, Ikua, I think, showcased her Mabuku, which basically was her first book. Um, she doesn't like to say it, but I actually had two of them made by my mother. <laughs> and um, some of the inclusion in her book includes some of the pictures that were in um, my rendition that my mother uh, made for me. Um, that also became kind of a hand-me-down for Ikua as well, but just showing some of the pages that um, were in this little um, book that my mother made that um, now is showcased in pieces um, there in Ikua's book. And um, just knowing that we had a household there with my father full of literature, literacy, the arts, um, which again is kind of my cup of tea now and a cool with the literacy piece of things. So just putting all of that um, rich childhood together, it's just uh, fabulous to see this evening and I celebrate um, her accomplishment today. Thank you, sister. <laughs> I call her hashtag publicist. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank oh, that, you. that is beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you both so much for joining us today and for sharing your beautiful words. Um, we, you know, we were super excited to meet you and to, uh, to learn from you today. So, uh, so uh, we hope you have a great evening and, and thank you again for joining us. Thank you for having thank us you. and congratulations, Ikua. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Okay. So Ikua, um, could you, uh, right now we're getting to the point where we do the author read. So yeah. uh, as I understand, you have a selection picked out. So uh, would you share that with us, please? I would be happy to. Okay. So my name is an address is the title. 
And when you open the book, it starts with a note from me. I'm not going to read the whole entire note because it is quite um, lengthy. And for our time, I want to make sure that we get a little in there. But it says, Aquaba, welcome to the ABC story of my name. Did you know that a name includes history, geography, and migration? Language, culture, and heritage are also linked to a person's name. I chose to use the letters of the alphabet to show how wide and deep names can go. My name is an address. A is for address. I am American, but people are confused when they see my name written or hear it spoken. Where's your name from? Some ask. My name leads to the continent of Africa. B is for born. My father was born in Cape Coast, Ghana. He lived in a two-story compound house. It is in a busy neighborhood called Kwanapadu. Our extended family still lives there. Generations of family pictures are hung high on the walls. <laughs> C is for change. Some coastal Guineans were baptized and renamed when enrolled in the British education system. Albion means Old England. Men's may be linked to a British Royal Navy Admiral who patrolled the coast. Our family's indigenous name is Anamua. We chose to keep the men's surname because it can be traced back to our family. There are people with the same last name in the cities of Cape Coast, Ada, and Salt Pond. Men's is my maiden name. D is for distinct. Mama and Papa gave me a name that is distinct from the names of most people. I am thankful they decided to follow a cultural tradition. It is a name that is common in Papa's country. E is for examples. Ekua is my first name and leads to my ancestors' country. My middle name, Ruth, leads to my Christian religion. I have cousins with the same first name, but their parents chose a more traditional Fonti spelling, Ekua. My grandfather suggested the spelling of my name. F is for facts. I am Fonti. Fonti people mainly live along the coastal regions of Ghana. Tourists visit the forts and dungeons to see where the Dutch, Portuguese, and British colonizers kept enslaved people. They want to learn how Africans were captured, tortured, and exported. They wonder how their families were impacted by the slave trade. They want to discover if their roots lead to Ghana. G is for gold. Ghana is in West Africa. It was called the Gold Coast until the end of the British rule. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah announced independence on March 6, 1957. I am blessed to be called more specifically a Ghanaian American. H is for hope. My father is the oldest of nine children. He left Ghana with the national track team to train in the United States or train in America. He hoped to get a higher education and run in the Olympics. Dad met my African-American mother in college. They had so much hope for their family and made faith, love, and giving a priority in our daily lives. And mm -hmm. I'll end there for time's sake, but I do encourage you to keep going because at the end, there's a special treat there that you'll see at the end of the book. You'll even see my wedding and you'll see my grandfather who oh. is going to be turning 103 next month. Wow. He's what still living. So I can't tell you how much this means to me to be able to share this with him um, and see, you know, his, his growth and progress over time and how he's impacted generations as well. Oh, my goodness. What a blessing. That is beautiful. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And that actually takes us right into our next question. So why did you choose to organize a story from A through Z? Well, I wanted to show readers how wide and deep names can go. 
I didn't want to just do a chronological biography. I wanted to show all the many things that there are in names. There's history, there's language, there's geography, there's culture. So when you ask someone to use a nickname or something like that, you're taking away a lot of things. And so I, as a teacher in me, I, I love nonfiction, nonfiction inquiry projects. And so this was like my inquiry project was my name. What's all in it? And how can I show how much, how the complexity is and why it's important to um, honor that? That is fantastic. That mm -hmm. is fantastic. And Akula, I know that we got to this question um, by hearing from some members of your family. Uh, but is there anything else that we didn't cover in terms of what your family thinks of your writing? Oh, they're excited. I had an auntie who said, am I in your book? She wanted to see herself. <laughs> and that was so touching. I was so honored, you know. Um, and I'm like, no, not this, not this first book. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe in future books, because we definitely have lots of stories to share. Um, but this first book, no. So they're very excited. They're very proud. And you've seen in the comments tonight, many of them are here with us today. Dad is the oldest, and so we have lots of family all over the world. And so Everyone is super excited and supportive. My kids are excited. They're in the book as well. <laughs> they gave me permission to use them. They're at that age. Um, and so I did ask and they gave me permission. So super supportive. My husband is number one cheerleader for me and I'm, I'm just so thankful. And like I said, with my dad being my mom's full-time caregiver, I just can't say this enough. One of the things he said to me, because in our culture, typically kids stay in the area to take care of their aging or sick parents, right? And mm -hmm. with my family in Missouri and my mom was sick and I was in Las Vegas, my dad said something that I'll never forget. And he said, you know, I want you to go. You have a job there. You're doing great. Keep going. Like I said in the book, keep soaring high as you can. I will do this because if you stay with mom, it could impact generations. And so he said, you go, you soar, I will take care of her, do the best that you can. And I've never taken that lightly. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm always trying to give my very best and take advantage of this opportunity that I'm given. So this publishing just means the world to us. And I can't thank you enough, Dr. Sarah. Oh, it means it means so much to us as well that you uh, that, that you're here with us. You're part of our family. Like, I, I know I keep repeating it sounding like a broken record, but I mean, we are so happy and so proud um, just to, you know, just to be part of your journey. So this is just so Thank amazing. You. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. yes, absolutely. So you have some resources for classroom teachers as well to use in their classroom at your website. So could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, absolutely. I love EduMatch's stance on by educators for educators. Of course, anyone and everyone is welcome to read the book, but we especially do great work for educators in all of the books. And um, this book, if you go to ekua.com, there's a couple of tabs there. There's one for educators and for adults. Because I, one of the things that makes reading difficult is when you don't know a lot about Ghana, for example, mm. or the culture. Or And this book isn't supposed to be the end of your journey. This is supposed to be a conversation starter. So I wanted to give teachers those discussion questions to take it further. These are idea starters. Take it further. This is where you can look. These are some paired text, extra book lists you can read in addition to it. Um, some videos from Ghana, um, some wonderful YouTubers out there who have really shown, like dad is wearing kente cloth. Maybe when the kids are seeing this in the book, they'll be like, well, how's that made? Well, there's a video on the, the website you can show, a quick clip of how kente is made. Um, other questions and things like that. I even have a STEM connection as well. Chris Woods, um, Daily STEM was so kind to be one of my members of my focus group. And he also looked at my extension document and we put together lots of his STEM ideas to have all kinds of connections, natural and meaningful learning for families and for schools as well. Nice. So that is fantastic. So everybody check out her website for some fantastic resources that you can add to your toolkit. Thank so. you. And I do have to mention there is a pronunciation guide as well. I filmed a quick video with my dad. So before you go to read this with your students, if you're feeling uncomfortable about some of the fonti that I put in here as well, you can see a quick video that I did with an authentic speaker speaking the fonti language. 
Oh, that is so, so cool. I love that collaboration. Like the the fam the whole family collaboration. That is just so, so awesome. We're in it together. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So you have you have like so many awesome things you're doing. So we would want to know uh what what do you plan to do next? Well, you have opened this door and welcomed me in the family. So I'm excited and I'm jumping in with both feet, Dr. Sarah. So look out. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, we have lots of ideas, lots of stories, as my dad was mentioning before, that we definitely would love to do more writing. We definitely want to do more sharing, finding all the creative ways we can to showcase my mom's work. Um, she's not with us, but she planted so many seeds, and we are going to use those seeds and continue what she started, because she was definitely an artivist, as my sister says, and using her art to educate and reach people, and we want to continue that as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. that is fantastic. Yes. Yeah. So definitely uh, keep your eyes peeled, everyone, for, for more great stuff, um, more greatness from Ikua. So uh, we're super excited. We're here for all of it. Um, so if you want to find the book, then you can find it on Amazon. You can find it on Barnes and Noble. Just look in any um, major retailer. And you can also find it on our website, edumatchpublishing.com. You just want to go to where it says shop and then you'll see our all new bookstore and you'll find it under new releases. So it is up there and you can order from there as well. Yay. Yay. And I just want to say, Dr. Sarah, that some of the proceeds from the book are going to go back to the nonprofit work that we do in Ghana as well. We oh. work with a lot of different organizations in Ghana um, and providing employment and all kinds of things like that. So Thank you so much for everyone who has purchased the book and supported this. Um, I'm not doing this to get rich. We're doing this with a message of giving and for hope. So thank you for everyone who has supported us. So please do know that that's what a lot of the proceeds of this book will be going towards. Oh, that is excellent. Just that giving back. That is just so awesome. So thank you so much for that. I see that we have another comment. So Kwame is saying congrats. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're getting to uh, the part of the final part, which is the giveaway. So yeah. what we will do is that I'm going to scroll to the very top of the comments and I'm going to just kind of scroll down very slowly. And then whenever you feel the urge to yell out, stop, just yell out, stop. And wherever my mouse lands, then that will be the person who gets a copy. All okay? right. All right. You ready to rock? Yeah. All right. Here we go. I feel like we should have sound effects. Do, 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 do. Stop. All right. So we have with equal step. Yay. So, yay. yay. <laughs> so, with equal step, <laughs> reach out uh, to Akua and um, just just uh, make sure to, to reach out to her. Okay. Absolutely. Please, akua.com, or you can send me an email um, through my website. That would be perfect. Or Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, I'm there too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that is fantastic. I think we have one more. So just uh, tell me when to stop. Just going slowly. slowly. Stop. Oh, that's me. We got to keep going. <laughs> Although I do want, I do want an autographed copy one day. I'll bring a oh, copy, and I just need you to sign it for me. Absolutely. Whenever we meet up face to face, I just absolutely. need that John Hancock on there. So yes, that would indeed. Be my pleasure. <laughs> All right. I appreciate okay. it. All right, so oh, right now, yeah, okay. All right, so we have Esperanza. So yay, Esperanza! Yay. <laughs> Congratulations. She's one of my colleagues in Facebook. <laughs> very nice. So it'll be very easy to connect. <laughs> and uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. So we have some some more folks tuning in and just thank sharing the friend. love. Yes, yes. indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, thank All you, right. everybody. I appreciate it. And I do want to say that if you are interested, we also have um, right now on my website, when you go to the home page, there is a drawing that we're doing this week for the Oh Freedom print. Um, so if you would like a free print of my mom's work, all we ask is just proof of purchase or proof of a library request. If you requested it from the library, that's good too. Um, and we're drawing two winners each night for some more extra prizes this first week, book week, book birthday week. So Woo! <laughs> feel free to get that drawing too for more prizes. 
Excellent. So, so the website is right there on the screen. So akua.com, check that out for all of the, uh, all of the info on the further contest. So mm -hmm. we are about to sign off for the evening. Um, but again, we wanted to congratulate you. Uh, this is just beautiful, powerful, inspiring, you know, and I'm, I'm super touched because uh, kids are going to be able to read this and see themselves in the book as well as adults too. So um, just, just absolutely love it and and you are amazing so um so thanks again for everything that you do i appreciate it i can't thank you enough i just all that you're doing for educators and families and readers around the world is just remarkable and so i appreciate you and edgy match and again thank you for opening this door look out i'm bringing the whole family and yeah. we are coming <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man, we can't wait. We can't wait. And we want to thank everyone who's tuning in tonight. So um, thank you all so much. So we're going to go ahead and bid you all adieu. But uh, everybody be safe. And uh, oh, and one more comment just slid yes, in. So Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> yes, thank this you. is only the beginning. Love it. All right. Well, everybody have a wonderful rest of your afternoon or evening. And we're going to go ahead and sign off right now. All right, Thank bye you everyone. So much. Thank you. <laughs>